as the Titanic was leaving Belfast and all the attention of all the, the passengers, the crew and the people in the harbor was into this majestic ship moving, uh, there was something happening inside that it never called attention until many years later, which was a, one of the bunkers. It had several bunkers full of coal, but one of them was actually burning. It was, it was burning with uh, a smoldering fire, which is flameless combustion, but it had grown to a size uh, that actually could be perceived by the people, the firemen in the boiler rooms. And uh, the captain had already called attention to this phenomena, was not happy about it, and had actually devoted a crew of about 12 people or maybe two dozen people to fight this fire and to suppress it as soon as possible. We don't know how the fire got uh, ignited. But we know that they're typical, uh, when you have a coal pile, a pile of coal, the typical scenario is what is called self-heating, where the coal itself starts to burn without an arsonist and without an accident. An arsonist and an accident can also start a fire. We don't know if that what happened in Titanic. There is no evidence for that. But you don't need an ignition source to have a pile of coal started to burn. As the Titanic was traveling from um, Europe to America, we know that the fire kept growing and growing. It had already been detected, it was a significant size because for a smoldering fire in a coal pile to be detected already is a large fire. Uh, and it kept growing and growing and growing. Uh, to the point that the captain, it, it, there is evidence to confirm that the captain grew uncomfortable about this because he was racing, the, the Titanic was racing against the fire in the sense that the fire was consuming coal. Coal is used, was used to propel the ship, actually it was the fuel of, of, the, uh, of the engines. Um, and the fire was consuming the coal that could not be released energy for the engines. It is confirmed that the Titanic was going too fast. For unknown reasons, it was going at maximum speed in a very dangerous field of icebergs, which the captain and the crew knew they were icebergs. There were multiple reports of other ships telling the Titanic, there are icebergs, you need to be careful. However, the Titanic was at full speed. No one can explain that. And no one has been able to explain that. The only theory that has been put forward with scientific evidence is the one that the, that the captain was raising the fire and needed to put all the coal out of the bunker inside the boilers before the fire was inutilizing the, the coal and maybe let the Titanic to have no fuel and not be able to reach New York, which had been highly embarrassing. So the, the, the fire kept growing. The fire was burning, burning in the coal bunkers and it kept growing and growing and growing. And as it was growing, uh, we know this because we can replicate that in experiments. It started to heat up the walls of the bunk coal bunker made of steel. In particular, this bunker that is known to have been on fire, one of the walls was a bulkhead, a bulkhead made of steel, uh, a, a, a very strong piece of a structure that is meant to act in case of uh, partial flooding. The bulkhead is what actually made the Titanic unsinkable, uh, or the bulkhead. So one of these bunkers had a bulkhead as one of the walls. Uh, as the bulkhead starts to heat up, the steel of the bulkhead starts to lose properties actually quite quickly. Uh, we know that a smoldering forest can have a temperature of the coal in the order of a thousand Celsius, between 500 and a thousand Celsius. That means that the steel could actually have got to temperatures between 500 to 800 Celsius, enough to make it glow red. And there is evidence from people that were in the, in the boiler rooms reporting the walls of the, of the bunker head, uh, of the bulkhead and the, um, of the, and the boiler uh, glowing red. So putting things, uh, putting everything together, the picture of what would happen in the boiler room is, is this would be a lot of people. We're talking about dozens of people shifting, uh, taking the coal from the coal bunkers into the boiler room, into the boilers to propel the ship. That's what they meant to do in a very smoky, very hot, very steamy atmosphere. Um, on one of the bunkers, in particular the one that was on fire, there was more people than normal all the time because these people, what we're trying to do, we're trying to get the coal as soon as possible from the uh, coal bunker into the boiler, non-stop, raising the fire. What is known is that the ship hit an iceberg that produced uh, a breach into the hull at different places, more than just one hull, there were different of them, and then the water rushed into the, into, through those holes into the compartments. Uh, then the bulkheads act as they're meant to. They, there were several bulkheads uh, in the Titanic. The ones that were uh, partially flooded acted as maintaining the ship afloat. There was water inside the Titanic, but the ship was afloat, and that is known. And then the Titanic stopped, the evacuation was ordered, and an emergency call was sent to all ships around. And then suddenly something happened, and there is no theory put forward for this, and the Titanic 
within 45 minutes it starts to sink and disappears under the sea with people inside. These people were not given enough time to actually evacuate into uh, larger ships. The theory that has been put forward now, I call it the fire weakening theory, is that one of the bulkheads failed catastrophically in a very particular moment because it was a bulkhead that was weakened by the fire. The same bulk, bulkhead that had been reported to be red glow, the same bulkhead which still we know would have lost tremendously their mechanical properties, we're talking about just like marginal mechanical properties will have remained in that bulkhead, could have failed and when it fails it's catastrophic failure and then lead to the sinking that is reported. We were able to simulate using computer codes, advanced state-of-the-art computer codes, that the fire would have deformed the bulkhead perpetually in a way that the center bit is coming out of the plane and the sides are coming into the plane. It creates like a perpetual wave if you want to, to, to see it like that, like a big deformation, uh, a warp. Um, this is actually when you look into the evidence of the Titanic, the written evidence, this is actually reported by the people who were fighting the fire. It's not only that it was red, red hot, it's actually that it had the form, it had created this warp that on the sides was slightly deformed and in the center it was a big deformation. We were fascinated because this was an independent uh, confirmation using computational codes of what the evidence exists of what was seen in the Titanic before it sinks.